All right. All right. You know, first of all, I am blessed for Alien Girl to be able to be my guest today. I am blessed to see people in the chat because I know this is the week of 4th of July. A lot of people are traveling. A lot of people get back to work. What happens is when you get back to work, you're overloaded with stuff that you didn't do on Tuesday. And of course, we all know on Monday, when you know Tuesday is a holiday, you didn't really do that much work. Then Wednesday, to get back in the mode of work sucks. So thank you, everybody, who's actually shows up this week. It's fantastic. And um, also, Jack and Ron on yesterday's show was an awesome show because you had two people that had two different beliefs on certain whistleblowers and stuff, and everybody talked fantastic. Everybody was polite. You know, even though you think differently, I mean, much differently, you can't ask for better than that because we are we all going to have different theories, different ideas, who we trust, who do we don't trust. It's normal. But as long as we do it in a cool manner, it's awesome. You know, before the show this morning, I always try to walk the dog. And we actually talked about um, me and my dog. I know it sounds weird. Me and my dog actually talked about Alien Girl this morning. We're walking down this trail. We're doing this trail just for you, Alien Girl. One, 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 one. No, this way. Come on, this way, dog. Let's go this way. Let's go on this little trail. All right. Oh, we got this tree. It was probably bent by a Bigfoot. Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> there is something special about this area. It, Wait for I, nobody. I'm going to explain it in a second. We're coming out. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Alien Girl 111. The reason I brought you on this this morning is this down here. I know you can't really see it. Let me see if I get a better shot over here. Right there. This is where the famous Mary Island incident happened. This is where UFOs crashed. And let me see if I can zoom in. Because down there is the Des Moines Pier. Oh, <laughs> my dog's pushing me. Where the famous, uh, the famous, um, you men in black that showed up first time ever story. And uh, so the question is, is the story true? So so where that's at, people, of course, I live in the town of Des Moines, and it's the famous Mary Island incident back in 1947. Of course, a lot of people, if they don't know about it, I know, I know Alien Girl knows about it, is where a, a lot of people on the boats, on the pier, apparently not, not saw one UFO. They saw a total of about eight UFOs. Apparently, a couple of the UFOs, uh, crashed to each other, an explosion, and one of the boats, they even had an animal dog that died from the explosion, and then the crash supposed to happen across the across the Pigeon Sound to an island called called uh, the Mary Island, which is connected to Vashon Island. It's kind of weird. Vashon Island like is like the actual island, but Mary Island is connected, and apparently that's where the crash was, and, and then the first stories ever of Men in Black appeared in Des Moines, the town that I live in, where my town now every year, just last week, had a men in black party bash they do now every year, where everybody goes down there, dresses like men in black, and 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 so that that's kind of cool little thing they're doing down there now. And uh so I know I know you know about the Mary Island incident. Um it, it, all of all your research, do you believe the story of the Mary Island incident? Uh oh, I don't hear you. Hmm. Can people can? Hello. Oh, that, there, there we go. Mute. It's an interesting thing. Well, I take all UFO stories and accounts and testimonies into um, into account whenever I'm trying to kind of come to the decision as to what I think's going on with the UFO phenomenon for a lot of different reasons. Um, I've been really like tricked along the way and confused and then i come back again to some of these stories to revisit them you know after i made some hardcore declaration about how i felt about it so i don't really do that so much anymore because i used to think vajarna incident in brazil was just crazy whack job 
interesting. Like I was, I remember I was hanging out with UFO man and we were talking about it and he was like, yeah, just like the vagina incident where the alien was driven around in a, in a giant truck. And I thought to myself, no way, dude, there's no way that could happen. But then I watched the documentary and my mind has been changed and I am, you know, a Vagarnia, a Vagarna believer now. Um, so when it comes to the Murray Island incident, I think it's really interesting because it actually happened around the same time. I think it made like a month or two um, after or before Roswell. Um, this incident also was the first time that we ever heard of an unidentified flying object being a flying saucer. Some, pers some people who think Kenneth Arnold was involved in this think that the whole idea of flying saucers came and it had started getting repeated over and over again. Say this is the first time they heard of this incident. Um, the men in black coming. Yes, I think the men in black have did come and, and probably did survey the like I said, mm -hmm. open to everything. But now that I, I always try to take every possible little corner of every little possible theory so I think the men in black more than logically, you know, they did go and probably try to intervene in this case, as we've heard time and again with multiple different men in black cases. The thing about the men in black is I think that back in 1947 to wear a black suit really did make them not not it made them blend, blend in with everyone. Right. Like there was something clean cut and nice about a man in a black suit in 1947. One, you think, you know, it's a respectable dude. Maybe he's going to work. People's standard dressed back then, not like they dress now. Right. No. And so I do think the men in black still exist. I think they just don't wear black. <laughs> I think well, they fought off of them. The, 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 I don't know. I think they might be aliens. The department of men in black exists, but they're not going to still wear the black shades and the black. I mean, it's just... Pulling up in, 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 a, in a, in a, not a limo, but a Cadillac, a black Cadillac and stuff, you know, I mean, they, they're going to look like just like you and I, maybe, maybe they're not going to walk around with a cowboy hat. I'm sure they're not going to walk around that, but, but, you know, and, and it is interesting because I know some people, uh, when I, when I talk about the Marianne, like, oh, that's just a, a, a copycat of Roswell. And I tell people, no, the Mary Island happened June 21st, 1947. Roswell happened in July of 1947 with the recovery. So, but it is weird when you think about two crashes in the same year. And it's not like there was news coverage like it is today with social media. So people say, well, maybe they copycat that. Well, that news don't get around that quick. Stories got out. They got popular but not like overnight. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it takes a long time for to print newspapers and, and get it out to the public's eye. But it is interesting that either of these UFOs, they don't know how to fly the ships back in 1947. They were drinking. You know, why were there two crashes of all things? You know what I mean? And not just sighting, they crashed. So, or maybe, you know what? But we all know throughout history, UFOs have come and go. And guys, I'm talking about UFOs from outer space. I'm not talking about unidentifying Chinese balloons. I'm, I'm talking about from outer space, all through history. But it's almost like, were they really making their first, like, eye visit in 1947? And they maybe the atmosphere wasn't adjusted correctly in their ship? And maybe that's why it crashed? I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out why in one year... If these two stories are true, <laughs> why did they both crash? It just hit me. Because you have Maelstrom Air Force Base in Washington, which is exactly where they had the nukes in 1947, oh. obviously, was the nuclear thing. We all know, if, like all of us are deep divers, you know. So if you're new, here's a good baseline. Oh. Just... When I met Bryce Sable, it was really, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm not. I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just incredible at interrupting. So people get really confused because either I'm dead silent because I just hate interrupting people. Because when I first started getting to doing these shows, I just rewatch them and I just interrupt people nonstop. So you know, if I start talking, I can easily keep going and going and going. And then sometimes people get freaked out because like I'm just dead silent on panels and they're like, oh, "What's wrong with her today?" Very awesome because uh, Bremerton is over there, and we have a huge Navy base. Uh, uh, we have nuke, we have nukes on these submarines, so there is nukes over here. You know, so if there's actually a, a, a World War Three with with nukes, I live in I live in an area that's going to get blown up first because we actually have oh, nukes. Right. You're right. UFOs are known to 
powered up by nuclear yes. power. Yes. So I'm just looking up Maelstrom Air Force Base on Wikipedia right now to get an idea. Um, so looks like I want to see when it was when it was established. It was built in 1942. So that would make sense because then you'd have the nuclear. The, so 1942 Maelstrom Air Force Base was you know created, and then you have a five year period of where nuclear stuff was invented. Um, this would also show that like obviously there was a huge interest in Maelstrom Air Force Base with the nuclears from that other one. That's that's a case that's reaching up into Congress. Um, and so I I mean I think it's I think it's it's fascinating that we're finding all these correlations and uh, you know just as a as a as a baseline for people, right? All this stuff happened in what I would call like the UFO nuclear era. I mean, we did have other really amazing uh, sightings like the McMinnville case and things like that. Well, let me see what McMinnville, this is when I get creep. This no, is when I, I get, I get curious, right? So McMinnville was 1950, which is the one you have the, the one flying saucer. So we've got, Flying saucer Kenneth Arnold here on Murray Island in 1947. We have the Roswell UFO crash, July 1947. And then we're looking at 1950. Ooh, read this. Read this. The fact is they crashed due to the new radar systems that were that were started using in 47. Notice all the supposed crashes are near military bases using the new advanced radar system. I forgot. He is correct. That was being pushed out in 1947. That might have cause interference maybe the ships weren't adjusted to it yet that could be a possibility i, mean, mm -hmm. it, I think it's know, interesting I, people are like how can extraterrestrial craft crash well it can crash well you know we crash our plane well, and crash. i think they Cars can crash. die i mean i think i don't think they're immortal either no i so. mean you know why why do a lot of people crash cars now because they're looking at their phones they're looking at something else and they're not realizing what's in front of them and they crash UFOs might see life form for the very first time and looking out at, at life and you know they run into each other I mean it yes it could happen no I mean I just think it's very interesting because we go into space and it's life or death every one of those astronauts that goes up into space every second is a death defying moment where a pinprick in those spaceships could just kill everyone on board within seconds right so it's not a, I mean it's very possible that interstellar travelers would uh crash because <laughs> i mean they're yeah and i and i think they're i think they're biological artificial intelligence that's what i do think the little grays like all over the screen that we have here i think they're biological artificial intelligence i really do think that so i see i don't think the real aliens have been here i don't years i think some of them maybe we've had like telecom i don't know whatever this is just stuff i work out in my brain every day <laughs> no actually people i'm not originally from seattle i'm i'm a fresno knight from california where if you ever been to fresno we're all aliens in fresno you, nice, you run nice. you run you run from fresno but oh man no no, no me no i no i, I love <laughs> aliens i love the aliens but um um in um of course, we know over this past weekend, we have the the big, huge Roswell UFO conference. And I know you've been through a lot of conferences yourself. But would you say, is it safe to say that the conference of Roswell is probably like maybe the granddaddy of them all, like maybe the biggest one or... You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I like mean, so I'll give you like kind of a brief rundown of all the conferences. So I started going to conferences. I first went to Disclosure Con in Arizona. That was 20... I want to say 2021. This is actually my third year covering the Roswell Festival, which is interesting. So, I mean, 2020, I don't even remember how this happened. But finally, I think everything was shut down. So there's the Roswell UFO Festival. And in Roswell during roswell festival there's usually multiple conferences right so the festival is different from the conferences not to mention that in the town they're having 5ks they're having cooking contests they're having events like all over it's it's absolutely insane so i think the roswell festival is something that you got to put on your bucket list for sure because it's it's a great festival um and the conference was surreal i think what makes a conference in my own opinion 
is is one the energy of the people who's coming to the conference right like that's like where things can get really magical so i don't know if there's any one particular conference that's magical i used to think you know contact in the desert might be really cool but they charge so much yes for people to go like i really 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 wanted to go to contact in the desert this year but i decided not to for a lot of reasons mostly because 600 bucks is like damn that's it a lot of money get, it could get very expensive some of these conferences you and know? so here we go i go to the roswell incident like let's think there's got to be how many people do you think come to contact in the desert how many tickets do you think they sell i don't know i, I know <laughs> roswell sold out all tickets were gone what was do you know what the capacity was that's for a good roswell question by chance? i wonder if i type that in if it would tell I don't know. actually dan danny Staten, my my researcher danny can you type in to see what is how many tickets did they sell for the Roswell? I bet I bet he'll find me the answer. Tim Freestow was there. Um, because I will say this, the the conference meeting rooms were not jam-packed, except for the big ones, right? Like the ancient alien panel, packed. The thing is, is I really encourage people to go someplace like Roswell, because you're not gonna have to pay money for a meet and greet. You go to Alien Con, they want to add like what another two hundred dollars to your ticket oh. to go get a picture. You get a professional photo with Sukalos or Childress. Childress is, was just walking around. There's way so less people at these conferences. We had a whole one hour stream. I got Vinny from Disclosure Team, Graham Rendall from I don't remember, but he's got an awesome channel. We got Nick Pope on. We got David Childress. We got even more people. I can't even name them all. And it's always at the small conferences that I have the most luck. Like when I went to Disclosure Con in um, Arizona, I was able to get Travis Walton. I sat down with Travis Walton for a half hour, able to stream with him, Such just a nice sitting guy. next to him. Yeah, Such yeah, a nice super guy. nice guy. Sit, yeah, he will sit with any anybody, you know, to talk mm -hmm. to you. He does. He's not that guy. Like I ain't talking to you. I'm not. I'm gonna charge you seventy five bucks for an autograph. He will sit there. And tell you, and the thing is about t his story, it never changes. That's what makes him more believable that it's it's the same. You know, a lot of people's stories change over time. They get a little more exaggerated. Not him. His story stays exactly the same. And I know what you're talking about cons. Cause like every year, every single year, my whole family, we go to a Comic Con. I know Comic Con was not UFO Con, Bigfoot Con. But every year we go to Comic Con because exactly what, what Nikki said, everybody... The energy, you're having a good time. Everybody can be accepted. Everybody's wearing costumes. Nobody's making fun of you. I mean, it's it's like the greatest time. My son takes off and plays Dungeons and Dragons all day, and then then we all get together. I mean, it's just it's just awesome, and it really is. And it, I it really, really is. People and this do is, it and they go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share this screen because because yeah. this is what I loved, what I saw about you over the weekend. Oh, you know, cool. when I judge yeah, with Vinny. You know, when I when I look at channels, sometimes going to a conference is just part of the deal. You know, they 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 they, they just go because they're supposed to go. But you and Chris and all your videos were smiling, having fun. You could see that you were you guys really wanted to be there. It wasn't about doing your show, which I mean you're doing your show, but it was about meeting people and it was just it just fantastic i mean just yeah well uh, i think these conferences yeah yeah olivia i mean just both of you you and chris are just having a great time it just i loved it and there's a um another one you did that i was so impressed and i'm gonna tell you why thank you i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna um uh, when you were uh great. talking to uh cheryl where is it? yeah cheryl we had some great conversations when, when you're that talking day. to her First of all, you almost, I mean, you almost got to take cocaine when you talk to her because she can talk. I mean, yes. she can talk your ear off. And I'm sitting great, here like yeah. watching you, just listening to her because she can just go, go, go. But what I love about your conversation with her was she talked about, you know, being a trans. She talked about going through some stuff and all that. And it, 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 it touched me in a lot of different ways because a lot of people who follow my channel knows that. When I was born, I had two bigger brothers. By when I'm an adult, one of my brothers became a sister. And 
and became, you know, you know, trans. And, and what they had to go through with the hatred from people that, that they gone through. And my brother, my sister now is no longer with us. You know, part of it was because people weren't accepting it. But seeing like you two just having a good time and talking, that does a lot to a lot of people. Not just the UFO talk, just telling people that you, you relax and have a good time. And I wish my sister was still alive to like witness a video and get in talk, contact with Sharon. Yes. And, like learn to like people will accept, you know, you just got to fight for it, you know. And I loved your conversation. You weren't afraid to go there. And that's what oh, I, no, I was no. impressed. Well, right. Like there was some personal things that, that came out. I got really personal with her, um, probably a little bit more than I should, but that's the reason yeah, for you guys to go watch it. Real. Yeah, real. it was really real. It was really real, but it's not something I really talk about too much. But um, with, with her, right, with being trans and being so open about it, when you are your authentic self, you're at your biggest power peak yep. in my own in my own opinion. And, and I think it's kind of like, like for me, like with, um, I talk openly about my alcoholism and how I struggled very, very intensely. And it's actually a show. That's one of the reasons I go live every morning is because I wake up at the crack of dawn to like, I don't drink. I haven't drink since I've done doing the daily shows. And it's been incredibly hard, but my life is totally different. But that being said, you know, it's kind of like similar when you're, when you're trying to figure out, I think what you're, gender is or you're trying to figure out how you want to interact with the rest of the world what like your dream life is and just the fight you have to push to live your dream life it's not easy it's not like yeah no. i'm living my dream life like you have to push and people are going to be pissed they're not going to like that you want to it doesn't matter what you want to do whether you want to be like a balloon artist <laughs> Like, whatever the hell you want to do, people are going to just crap all over it and tell you it's ever going to happen. It's not, I mean, whoa. And that's the thing is it's like that's why it's really important to be very weary of who you surround yourself with, who you talk the most with. Because I'm just going to tell this to all the people in the live chat. If there's anybody in your life where you share your dream and they tell you it's never going to happen and you're wasting your time, get new friends. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'm just saying you know, get new friends because that's um, the thing for me doing this. I've gained so many positive friendships who've just encouraged me so much. And then, like before when I was like, you know, I mean, it was just an evening thing where it got really bad. But like before I wasn't surrounding myself with people who were bringing me up. I had a bunch of people in my life like I was doing the show weekly when I brought the show up to people weekly it was kind of like even when I did it on the low fly because it was like it wasn't every day right it was just something I did but like even when I would bring it up like just not feeling the support that it was anything legitimate even though I was like so passionate about this project that I'm working on called Alien Girl very passionate about it and I don't you know um really know why but at this point, it's it's the positivity. It's the stuff that you're talking about. Like I go to these conferences and it's just like freaking insane. And I don't have friends anymore who want to just drink, drink, drink. Let's get crazy drunk and party. I'm like, no, now partying equals excessive drinking. When everybody, someone's like, let's go party. All I hear is let's get blackout drunk. <laughs> like That's what it's translated in my brain. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I just think it's, it's just really interesting because it's a superpower to be your authentic self. And I feel like if you're if you're in a situation where you're trying to sober up, I'm a cannabis um, advocate, mostly because it really helped with my epilepsy. So, you know, I do use cannabis and I do think cannabis can be a huge, a huge benefit to people in their life because I think there's pharmaceutical conspiracy. Um, so I don't think we'll have like Lunesta and stuff as, as medical marijuana and marijuana becomes recreationalized. But what I'm just saying, so I, I'm so what I'm just saying is like speci specifically with alcohol, um, you know, if you're thinking about giving it up or you feel like um, in your life, it's it's just messing with you or you're forgetting things or, you know, you're, you're getting into crazy or you're getting or your personal relationships are really suffering, you notice, or you can't remember things. Just remember that, like, although you might feel some shame like I did about your 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 addiction and things that you're having trouble with, once I quit, it was a superpower. 
It was something that was destroying me. And when I quit, it became my superpower, which is why Russell Brand's a huge inspiration for me. Not only is he conspiracy theorist, but he took that he took that addiction that he had. But it was way like a thousand times worse than whatever I would like. Maybe like eh, 10 times worse. I'm going to tell you (laughs) something about Russell Brand. He became amazing. Yeah. I'll tell you something. First of all, I do want to say what everything you say is true. Because like our good friend, Long, uh, Long Island Bigfoot Mike. You know, myself, he's been in the military and we've both been diagnosed with some PTSD. And he'll tell you that when he goes out and, and investigates Bigfoot, it helps him. It, it's like his cure. It helps his mind relax. Like when I go out and investigate, it does help you relax when you have like PTSD and all that. But you said Russell Brand. I don't know how people feel about Russell Brand or not in the chat. Russell Brand is a very intelligent guy, very intelligent. And he is not shy to say what he's been through in his life. And what I like about Russell Brand, I like him because he doesn't give a shit if you're a Republican, Democrat. He will, he will bash any groups that is against the human body, the human spirit. You know what I mean? I mean, he's really truly is the spirit. Now, can he get a little conspiracy out there? Yes, but we all can. But if you listen to Russell Brand, he's a very intelligent person. And you're right. He had a horrible childhood that 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 it's amazing that he can still he's alive today. It's amazing that he's still alive today. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through his story, people. Look up his story. It's amazing that that guy can still walk around and, and, and is alive today. But 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 now so when you went to Roswell this time around, was there anything that like was not not new in a way, but like any new new story broke there somewhere about something that maybe the rest of the uh, the country don't know about yet that came from your conference by any chance? Any great news um, from there? I think for me, the biggest takeaway I had was from Bryce Sable's discussion, his presentation, which is. I mean, at any point right now, we could be looking tomorrow. He said even he's he says he thinks it might happen within the next year that, you know, we're really going to get that that disclosure that we're looking for. And he thinks that disclosure is going to be like the president coming out and saying that we aren't alone, you know, in the universe. It's almost like but the thing is, I always seem like. In every single community, I always hear that. I, 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 I'm not bashing that. I'm saying it's like almost every single community. Next year is the year that everything's going to come out. The truth's going to come out, and it, it seems like I hear that every single year. But then it really doesn't, right? You got you got the government that does those cute little UFO conferences on TV and all that, and all I see is people in the community get so angry when they watch these government conferences and it's almost to a point where it's like why watch them because you are are we really hoping we're going to learn something new or are we really hoping that they're going to slip up and say something they're not supposed to to say something because when i look at the panels of these panels first of all we all know everybody on that panel maybe one might have an inside information behind the scenes where most of them are just puppets and they're put on a panel because they, they have to have a panel and they're just going through the motions. You know what I mean? Like, like, okay, I got to talk about UFOs today. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll mention something about the video because you know, and I know there's only a few people within the government that really knows what's going on because you all because you're in the government. It doesn't mean you get elected. You're automatically get a file to say, here, here's all the UFOs past thousand years. Only lifers and selected few will have any information about true UFOs behind the scenes. I I mean, that's my opinion. Sure. I mean, I'm writing down some thoughts, what you're saying, which is, um, you know, it seems like nobody cares because it's going to happen and next year it's going to happen. And what I find covering it daily, Monday through Friday, going through the regular hashtag UFO Twitter news cycle, as well as the regular news cycle, it's not just the hashtag, is that people don't see the tiny wins. And when they do, people have such ontological shock that they like, they can't accept it. They don't, and they push it away because it's uncomfortable. So like this stuff being talked by the general public 
it doesn't it doesn't hit them but like some of the tiny wins i would say a huge tiny win in my own opinion is grush coming out i know everybody has multiple opinions about him and all sorts of stuff but for me it's almost like such a huge confirmation on all sorts of different different levels of information that i've picked up here and there through my little interest in ufology um is that like i mean it's in it's in it's it's in the ether like i use the words the body the craft the documents in my outro or my intro i can't remember which one i think it's my outro and that's not me coming up with it that that wasn't me like coming up with that was because in the chats for the last 10 years those are the things we want the bodies the craft or the documents and so when grush came forward and he's like we've got the craft we've got the bodies that's what I've been saying the whole time. So even if it's wrong, it's not wrong in my mind. I know when Grush came out, oh my God, I flipped out. I texted like, like everyone. I, I was looking for everyone in the UFO world to be like, dude, how, and even, and it's just too much, even for people. It's just like, we can't, we can't, it's, it's too much of a shock. This is really going to screw with people's lives when it comes out for a lot of different reasons. Like we no longer have a threat of terror well we still have the threat of terrorists obviously oh, yeah, we're i always, think that yes. i think aliens are going to be the next terrorist i think aliens are going to be the next covid it's just another thing to freak out the people hey. even if it's real or not like i don't know the, the more i get into false flag alien invasion theory the more i just think it's too complicated to actually <laughs> I know. exist like I get really deep into it, and I'm like, dude, this just sounds like too many how you feel. layers of disinformation. Like I can't even process this. Like I, I and then you come down to Occam's razor, right? Which is like, if it's too, if there's too much, that it's the simplest answer, really. If you really look at it, like it probably is the simplest answer, which is that they have the bodies, they have the craft. So that was a huge win, but nobody really responded. Everybody in our community, not everybody, but like people did get skeptical. They're like, I don't think this guy's legit like that's what oh, makes it's i think it's because we're tired the brief the not, president. it's, like, it's, it's hard to say yeah, i want to say we're tired i think it's because it's like everybody has a story but we're not actually ever seeing actual true 100 percent evidence and the thing is i mean if, if somebody did have a picture of alien actually if somebody really did have one everybody's gonna say that's fake anyway so it, it's 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 hard. And I agree with something with um, Danny said in the back. Disclosure has been happening for years. And I agree with that. There, the evidence has been in front of us for years, but the world don't care. And you know what? He's not wrong. And I'll tell you why. I, I have talked to a lot of people in Washington where Washington is more towards, um, they're towards UFOs, but they're more towards Bigfoot because this is Bigfoot country up here. And they're like, yeah, we believe in Bigfoot, but we just don't care. We just don't care to talk about it. We, you know, Bigfoot's not, it's not a, it's not a subject. People believe it. They just don't care. You know, and until we get everybody to care, you know, but hey, I will say one thing. I will say one thing about if you agree with the UFO conferences or not, not in the UFO conference, but the government panels or not, but for a young kid, if, you, if a young kid watches it and see a panel of them talking about UFOs, that might be his way into the community. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, yeah. like, wow, UFOs might be real. They're actually talking about it. And that's fantastic because for your research, everybody's research to go forward, you got to have the younger generation to come in, run with it, to keep going. Because eventually, I believe one day that we are going to start voting out these same old type of political people or start bringing in people that's more open-minded and maybe start talking about some of these classified. You know what I mean? It's going yes. to take the young people. And what I hate about some of these people in the Bigfoot community that the older people, they don't want to brace the young people. It's like, they want everything to go through them. I'm like, hell no. That's why they don't like me because I embrace young people I want to see young people run with it because they're going to be the future when we're gone. Yes. You have to. Right. 
Right. And it's interesting to me because like I take my kid, I take my husband, I'm walking around with them, you know, kind of like people. It's a different energy than what the older crowd was even than me, you know, like the older like the older crowd like created us. Right. There was a time when people said all they had was gray haired dudes at these things. And it's not that anymore. You got all sorts of ages, all sorts of interest. And you know what? The wacky aspect of it brings people in. And so for me, like when I market my channel, when I do this stuff, when I get out there, I want it to be wacky because you're going to be able to get people in who don't have because if they think i make like i i don't know how to explain it but like that's the way that in my own opinion you're going to get to the mainstream right like so many people are afraid to create merchandise so many because they don't want to look like a grifter i don't want to be a grifter if i'm making money because who cares you guys our community like if you've got a youtube channel out there and you're like don't our community is way freaking smaller than you all think go to the it conferences is. and then you're like oh hey Vinny. <laughs> And then, like, we think that people have these massive followings because we follow them in a tiny little community. But, like, no, this stuff is not pushed out. There's no YouTube UFO channel except Secure Team that has over a million subscribers. Okay. So, like, the idea that we should be concerned about being grifters makes no sense to me. We need to be pushing this content yes. to the front of the YouTube tube page yep and it's never gonna happen because we're shadow banned so on top of that we have those those hurdles to go over and and so people just get obsessed with this grifter word okay so if you're a grifter you're never gonna make money off of it okay or you are gonna make money off of it and then you're supposed to feel super guilty when you build an awesome platform like people like security I know. third phase of moon does because they put those videos out they've worked they've put the freaking work in to get there, dude. Me and you know how much work goes it into is. these YouTube channels to people make them need to grow. Stop fighting and just embrace each other. It's, it's, I just it's, think it's that people we're stronger together than we are separated. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, definitely. And I, I try to embrace all the content creators, everybody who's putting in, even if I see that there's like some, you know, weird stuff going on. I, I don't measure people as to whether or not they like Gary Nolan or not. Right. Like, <laughs> I don't measure people based on if you're into false flag alien invasion or not, or whether you like someone's tweet. I've been blocked by people just by lock liking somebody else's tweet. And then they go on, they're like, I just blocked all the horrible people on UFO Twitter today, right? And you're like, I didn't no. do anything to you. you. Only that kind of mentality yeah, is embarrassing. Now, don't get me so wrong. You go... do block people who use bad language, like like, yeah. like, like, like calling names. That's fine. Sure, but not, I not block that. people if they're like, but yes. And I even, say something I just them. Uh, that I loved about embracing your family within your thing. Because, you know, like, uh, you know, I embrace my family, you know. When I did this here, oh, where is it? When I did this here, when I was walking around during my uh, paranormal investigation here, that was being filmed by my 16-year-old daughter. Right. You know, my daughter, my daughter's involved. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I'm not afraid to to talk to my kids. Now, I let my kids have their own mind. You know, make up their own decision. I never force anything, but my kids are involved in, in a lot of different ways. You know what I mean? And embracing your family, that's fantastic. I know some people keep it separately. I'm going to do this, but I don't want that, you know, but, but when you have family that supports it, you can't beat that kind of support. I mean, it's just fantastic. Well, and it's just such a positive thing. Like I, um, you know, I like to encourage the children to start a, po I think everyone should just go out there start a podcast see what happens whatever <laughs> just go out there have fun with it try it you know I invite some people on whatever you'll learn how mics work you'll learn all these things and especially children you know all these people bash content creation are you kidding me mr beast is a billionaire so all of our little alien family shows that are like oh i shouldn't grift screw it you guys if mr beast can make a like make a billion dollars off of red ball blue ball i like what Witch ball and like all the he does some amazing stuff where he helps a bunch of people which is why i really love watching his show right mr beast and he's got his own product he's got his own thing like there is a grasp here and and there is a necessary need for people to be talking about this currently in mainstream media get on the wave be part of it it's always happening next because it is. And it's only the people who are noticing that see, like you notice, you see when this stuff comes out. And mm -hmm. like the only reason we can't have giant celebrations about it is 
because there's still so many people around us telling us not to take in this information. I want to add something more and then I'll be quiet for a little bit. But oh, Amua Mua, oh, bring it on, bring it Amua on. Mua came and it did a U turn around the earth, which, by the way, Mick West tried to argue with me that it wasn't. And that's not true because it actually turned out that it was closest to any other planet than it was closest to Earth. And he kept saying, I've kept people kept saying, oh, Amy, you just don't understand. I get this all the time. You just don't understand how gravity works. It's going to go around the sun. And I was like, no, you guys, it made a U-turn in the habitable zone. Quote, Avi Loeb. OK, like, I don't know why people try to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. It drives me nuts. And I didn't realize it till, till two years into it, a year and a half that I was being corrected on podcasts being told I didn't know what I was talking about only to go back and realize I was correct about what I was talking about. So I just want to add that, that it was true that Amuamua was closest to earth than any other planet. Okay. And when I woke up that morning, I saw a U-turn go around the earth and I was like, Oh my gosh. And then third phase of moon covered it. This was like, right. Like 10 years ago, there weren't very many UFO YouTube shows. So third phase of moon covered it. And I was like, Oh my gosh. That was an extraterrestrial probe that just did a U-turn around Earth. And this was before Avi Loeb was talking about it. And I just had this feeling. And like, then I was super excited. I went and told everybody in my regular life. Nobody gave a crap. So being able to do this every single day, go in, tell people, what, have these little celebrations because it is happening. It is happening every day. And um, it's just going to get to this point where people will be like, of course we knew. We knew there was Area 51. We knew about <laughs> the Roswell crash. We're going to, all of us are going to have that day when we're around the dinner table. And we're like, oh my gosh, isn't that sweet that the Roswell crash is real? <laughs> right? And everybody at the table is going to be like, we already knew that. We already knew. And I so, know. <laughs> oh my gosh, two years ago, I was fighting with you. Not fighting, but just trying to understand how you could think there was no one else in the cosmos. Like these same people who are like, no, we're totally alone in the world. Two years later, we'll be like, we already knew about Roswell. We knew everything about it. Wasn't and it, it? What that is, what that is. And I'll be quiet. I'm like, no, 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 no. Here. That's great. What that is. What that isn't it is, funny people, when you watch uh, Independence people, Day? Like, like if you actually watch Independence Day and they're like, Area 51 doesn't exist. Actually, it does. You know what I mean? And it does. And then the president goes there like he didn't know this underground stuff, which I do believe most presidents don't. You know, and and it's like, no, where do you get the money either. for this? You know, what you think a hammer costs uh, two hundred dollars, a thousand dollars? Yes, and that is actually one of the proof of like the progressive acceptance that the general public has of it. When that movie came out, and they were saying that they were still saying Area Fifty One did not exist. Yes, in that movie, it did not exist. It existed, but not to the public's eye. And so a lot of people are like, well, we always knew about Area 51. Incorrect. There was one day when we figured out that Area 51 existed. And it was the day we had the Julian Assange WikiLeaks and they found an email addressed to Area 51. That was the day they couldn't deny it anymore. I don't know. What about you? When did you hear? Like, in my own opinion, that's when it was like, oh, right. I've, I've been right. Like, I have that confirmation. I don't even Julian know Assange why it happened. was even, why they would even, I don't care they're doing experiments or not. Military's got. I've been in the military, so I'll people a little background. Everybody, I was in the military. I was Coast Guard. My brother was Navy. My my sister was Army. My father was Air Force. Uh, my cousins were Marines. So we, my family, has hit every single branch there is, and there are secret military bases all around the world, you know. But Area Fifty One is interesting because it's in the middle of a desert. Why not just say we exist? Because nobody's going to go out to – most people don't go to a military base now. Uh, you know, more or less going out to the middle of a desert for – Well, now it's a great distraction. This. Like, now they probably moved somewhere else entirely. Yeah, it, it, if they would have mentioned 51 a long time ago, like, yeah, it's a military base, they probably wouldn't even be these – um these – you know how like people go out there and camp and with cameras. If they would have just came out and said we had a military base, none of that would have happened. They kind of created their own problem because most people are are not going to drive to a desert to a military base. 
Because I looked I mean? into this as deeply as I could, especially with the Bob Lazar case, because I was under the deep impression that we did not know about Area 51 at all before Bob Lazar came out, which is, you know, which is moderately true from what I gathered earlier than that. There were newspaper articles circulating about locals knowing that they were building some sort of military installation in the area. So this was the knowledge base that they had when Bob Lazar came out. But there was no like real confirmation of Area 51, at least for me until I knew that they found an email to Area 51 in the Julian Assange WikiLeaks. And then shortly after that, I was seeing some History Channel documentary and they're like, we're at Area 51! <laughs> I was like, uh... Let me ask you this. On? Because there is money to be made in all communities. There, there, there are money to be made. You know, and there is opportunity for people to cash in on it but how do you try to figure out like okay here's a new whistleblower here's a new whistleblower like what do you do trying to figure out okay i could get behind this guy but i can't get behind that guy is there a certain thing that you look for when you know like here's an article like let me share i'm not going to read this article but here, like here's an article uh true or crazy UFO whistleblowers are coming out of the woodwork. And that's and that's because there's money. UFOs has been hotter. It's hot right now. So what do you do trying to determine who's fake and who's not as a whistleblower? Well, I'd it's say hard. It's I know. Convoluted. It, 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 it's, I'd it's, say it's pretty convoluted because there was a lot of stuff that came out with Lou Elizondo and Tom DeLong that made a lot of sense, right? And they are getting confirmation as time goes on and everything. But we also had the New York Times coming out and saying that the gimbal, the go fast, and you know some of the the other ones that they saw, the three videos were actually just airborne trash or adversarial drones. So there's always some sort of like weird mix up associated with that. I think all the whistleblowers are coming forward right now because. They have whistleblower protection and so they're not going to go to jail and then also they recently added defense companies they're asking defense co uh, defense companies to come forward if there were whistleblowers which would mean that falls in alignment with bob lazar you guys bob lazar lovers why aren't you why aren't you asking him to come forward a little bit more you know i i want him to come forward i would say i'm right down the middle when it comes to bob lazar but i really wish that we would see some of the positive supporters of bob lazar really encourage him to come forward because that could really be transformative and and if they're disappointed or not that he isn't coming forward and if that even changes their viewpoint which it probably doesn't but to bring it back to what you were saying is like how do i differentiate what information and what i mean it takes me a long time to come to like a serious conclusion about any instance um but for me there's a personal level that stamps the approval on it and so roswell for me i got that approval i would say in march i got that 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 um confirmation because my friend tanise who comes with she came to the conference and she's come to both of them she grew up in roswell on a ranch so we walk into the conference and this guy comes up to her, he's like oh tanise so good to see you they hug and they start talking she's like are do you believe and he's like yes do you believe and she's like yes and he's like yeah my grandpa was best friends with the sheriff and the sheriff told him that the government said they'd kill him if he talked about the bodies of the craft so like these grandchildren have immunity from ever because they could just say i'm full of it my i don't know right the government tries to kill the grandkids the grandkids could just be someone who's mixing everything up and they don't know what they're talking about so they kind of have this safety immunity from being killed by the government <laughs> but the point being is i've heard this thing like you're gonna get killed by the government everywhere right you're gonna get killed by the government and i'm like ah, nah. and to hear some guy say that and he's talking about his grandparents best friend in person changes things why would this guy lie to me who grew up with my friend in roswell right and so that's kind of what like that's the other layer like i'm also as an individual trying to uncover these answers right like i want to get to know melinda leslie way more because i was thinking about this the other day when you have friends who are experiencers you know i i assume that people who see people who are friends with a lot of experiencers that they've given you all the inside information like we know or even talk to him like we if you're friends with this person like you know all of it or you talk to travis and he told you something off air the truth of the matter is these are the most traumatic events in people's lives that have ever happened that's why they're so vulnerable when they talk about it so like to expect your friends to openly discuss 
these events, these tra- this trauma that they've been through is the same as asking your friend about any trauma that they've been yeah. through. Like, are you going to be like, hey, how was that thing that happened when you were a little kid that totally screwed you up? I do want to make a, do uh, that to your friend, right? I do want to make a correction. Just a little small correction. It should not be about the money. It should be about the truth. I don't I don't All right. blame well, people. I, never talk about money. I don't Sorry. blame people if they can make some money just because I know that if, if you can make some money, it allow you to spend more time to research and all that. But there's a right way and there's a wrong way. The right way is you do your study, you do your work and all that. And then of course there's people that will just completely lie. And then there's people who do shortcuts. You know, they want, they want to get to here quickly. They have in good hearts, they go here. Like uh, you talked about Tom DeLong, and I, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys my opinion about Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong's heart, his heart in UFOs, for the love of UFOs, I don't deny that at all. He He's always been into UFOs. I support him uh, looking for UFOs. I think the only thing that was sad for me with Tom DeLong, he got in kind of with the wrong person where they, they try to start the, 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 the company, and he like he's like was he was over his head as like a CEO trying to be in charge and the deal with the government. I, I think that he hurt himself because he got ahead of the game where they, they, they fed him. Like you could be in charge of all this. I think he's better like a um, investigator, like, like, like investigating himself. Cause he's got files and files and videos of UFOs. His heart is there. It just, he, he took a bad turn with the group of people that, He's, some people are not meant to be a CEO of, of a major company. Some people are better ground soldiers than they are as a person in charge. And I think Tom DeLong is a better soldier investigating than being in charge of a company. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And I think, you know, he's definitely capitalized off of it. And that's, I mean, I don't, I don't really care if people capitalize on whatever, you know, like I, there's plenty of content out there that is not as <laughs> beneficial as ufology that makes tons of money. Um, and so when it comes to money and, and it comes to our shows and making these shows, yeah, you know, I did, I did my taxes on it and I came out even with the amount of money I spent going to conferences, you know, you have their hotel rooms, you can do your mileage, all this stuff. I net zero. And and I really I'm really proud of that for a lot of reasons, because I really love Lady Gaga. I love the way that she set up her business. I love to see the way that she's growing. I love to see how she treats her fans. Right. Like, that's huge. Like, she respects the fandom. She <laughs> respects what she's doing with the people that that love her and she loves them back. And that's so huge. And so what she used to do when she would go have her concerts, she'd say, I want lights. I want cameras. I want like a giant costume. I want this and that. And they'd be like, look, Lady Gaga, that costs way too much damn money. And she says, I don't care. I'm going to make the show the biggest and the best it could ever be. And if I don't, what's the point of me even doing it? And so she would go after the concert to do another show at a bar to make up the money that she needed to make that concert awesome because at the end of the day maybe it doesn't matter about the money that's not what this is this is about like i was saying like pushing it like there's so many things to make these shows as great as you could possibly make them lighting microphones awesome computers things that can help you really grow as a content creator in general and so you know like you do have to invest in these shows for them for them to be good in my opinion like and so you know i've just been i've just been really happy with the things things have done because here's the here's the real gamut is is it's the um it's the money that you put into it like me and you i don't we and you both pay stream yard costs i pay 25 dollars mm-hmm. a month for stream yard i also pay um T- typically photoshop and the adobe sweep is 60 or 70 dollars a month i have a discount um just through education so i only spend 30 dollars a month but right there that's 55 dollars a month that i spend and that's not even the beginning of the costs that i do for the for the youtube channel you know so 55 dollars a month right now i mean i'm not even calculating that's just general and that's with a 40 dollar discount on adobe Premier. I'll just so tell you, I'm you... in the red. <laughs> you're in, in the red. red. It's well, it's good to be in the red. That means you're investing. <laughs> I, 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 when I make those cartoons, I lose money. <laughs> yeah, but it makes but, the show better. But your but cartoons they're fun. are awesome. You're fun, you know. I, and it's I'm like not, it's like let's but... do it the big and the best in the right way. And you get the graphic artist. You get all the people from the community. It's there. Everybody loves those freaking cartoons. And it's because you put more into it. And I, I always think that, like, dude, if you're gonna do it, make it 
super awesome right and like i think what what everybody in this community really needs to hope for is somebody any one of us you know and i would say christina gomez did a really great job growing a lot but like on the offside she had jimmy church on her show once a week <laughs> i mean like so she and even her i think she's shadow banned to a level um because it's just so hard to grow she's the one i've seen grow the fastest is christina um but like it, i just think one of these content creators that we have surely got a new we gotta get coming. some people that go straight to the top do you know what i mean we gotta get one that's yep. all of us get thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers like a huge expansive that's the problem is not focusing on expansion like when 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 we send out these vibes right these reactive vibes I don't know how to explain it, but when I meet expansive individuals, I immediately know. And it's not because they don't have healthy boundaries. It's because they're creatively on fire. Like nothing can stop them. They're going to burn everything, you know, like like Nick Pope, like Vinny, like Graham Rendell, like all these people that I talked to at the conference. Right. Like they are on fire with passion. Money be damned. All these things be damned. It's not about the money. It's not about the power. It's about saying what we want. That's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, the I little, the little thing goes. About, I've been ranting. So no, 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 no. Like, blah, 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 blah. If people didn't know, I have a new one coming out in about two weeks. So I got another one coming out, and you can see how different we are. We're flying through the sky on bikes. So that's coming out in a, in a couple of weeks. You know that? No, no, no. Uh, oh, paranormal pixie. Hey, you did a great job last night on uh, Jimmy J's channel. Just want to say that was that was very fun. Of course, you're gonna to have to check them out. Rockets, those cards. There's there's ten of them right now. I got ten of them. So yeah, check them out. They're all fun. Each episode's different. And actually, those episodes of the cartoons, guys, really technically, I'm not trying to get in deep here, but if you actually check out the cartoons, they're about the human factor, like myself and Connor hanging out with the Bigfoot, hanging out with the alien, all different cultures of, of through the whole world davy jones trying to save the world with us aliens bigfoot everybody put together so the cartoon is really about not just becoming friends with your neighbors coming friends with your neighbors from space everybody together so that's the whole idea of, of we all want to make this a better world and all that so what's uh do you have another um conference coming up you know we're getting close to the end of the show this is our hour um, mark is there anything else yeah. coming up no I don't, I don't think so i think like the next i i think for me the next one i want to go to is i think i'll put the money into it and go i really want to go to the ufo congress i think that the international ufo congress that would be the one hey there we are yeah, I'm just, I always live when I have guests on. I always like to show their channel and all that. Dude, look, look, we got 1.5 yeah, yesterday. We got over 619 videos. You do live uh -huh. shows, your videos. Now, the only thing I would have to say, I wish you could change, but you can't. When you do your live show, it's 4 a.m. where I live. I know. I'm so sorry. You know, so, no, no, no. It's fine. So, when I'm up, you know, I have to try to get up extra, 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 extra early. And the problem is, is I'm usually working on the next show all the way to like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes, but, man. It, it's yes. It's early. But you got <laughs> uploads. You got shorts. Mm -hmm. You got I'm trying I mean, you got to push tons. it, man. I'm trying to push it as far as I can because I figure, like I was saying, like bigger, better, the best you can. Yesterday, we got 1.5K. We got 1,500 on, on our show yesterday morning, which was awesome, you know, because I think everybody wants to like, I, that would be awesome to have every show get 1,000 views if we could, it, if we could do know, that, you know. You know, it's, it, I always say good things will come with patience and, and hard work. You know what I mean? You, you just got to You got to do it your way, not their way. Not how someone else does it. You just got to do it your own way. And you're going to be successful with your own way. Just be yourself. Because people like who you are. Not because you're trying mm. to represent, you're, you're trying to act like you're another channel. You are you. And I well, watch just you. like You got energy. You got like, sometimes you got music. You got the groove going. That's you. 
And that's the best part. You just need to be you. And it's like, hard, though, because people, yep. they want it to be all serious. They want ufology. So sometimes people, like, I become the poster child for, like, what not See, to do because I'm why, silly. That's why I, I, I like you. I always tell people there's channels that are serious. And that's fine. But sometimes you can get too much of that serious channel, but you still want that kind of a content. So you come to my channel, we're more relaxed, like your channel, you're relaxed, we're fun, we talk to the people in the chat. I love that. I mean, that's, that's, we're, we're, we're mirror almost the kind of channel we kind of run. It's to have a good time and, and relax about it. We well, are I serious. We love UFOs. We know they're real, but we do it in a relaxed, more fun of a way. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because I also think like when I first started doing YouTube videos, cause I have a crafting channel um, that I really like to post on sometimes, you know, it's kind of cool. Some of the family goes over there, but like there was one thing I noticed cause it was like a mommy blog. Right. And there's plenty of gorgeous model women, but those are not the women who are dominating the mommy blog. You uh, YouTube searches. They're regular old women, right? They're not old. They're regular women, regular mothers, regular people that you'd see at Walmart. And and the problem, the thing is, is although people love to look at models and although they like to put them in front of people and it becomes like an easy way to get people to stop and watch something because they're like, oh, that person's attractive. I'm going to watch longer and longer and longer. The problem is I think people are getting really smart because of the internet mm -hmm. and what they really I crave is raw true authenticity something that we don't get very much in this instagram ego crazy world like somebody who's really people crave that like like they just want people to be real they want people to be raw they want people to be authentic um and i think it goes a longer way too so like i think sometimes being super serious like i don't see i don't see some of these <laughs> I think somebody who's going to break through is going to be somebody who's more like Russell Brand than anybody else in the UFO yep. community. I don't think it's going to be somebody who's some serious UFO researcher. In fact, I think that's holding people back from growing because they look at it. They're like, wow, this is really good content, but this is so cut and dry, square, good looking, 100%. delivering a script. Ah, la, la. I, this is what's, and it's like, I get I can't it. agree with you they're more. Hot. I tell they're people. Hot. I get it. You want them. Okay. Oh. So you want to watch it. Cool. But like, that's not going to explode. No, that's not going to become the mainstream thing. They'll become newscasters or something. But I sincerely think in conspiracy, alien, UFO, Bigfoot world, it's the wacky, authentic, real voices that are going to break through to the top or ones that are comedic or ones that are eccentric. I just think I that layer think. is really, but it's true though. Well, like people, they, they have a longevity for a little bit. And like, we can all get famous people on our shows, especially <laughs> if they come on quite a bit. Like, I would love if, what if Nick Pope wanted to do a I've, weekly show with me? What do you think that would do with my stats? <laughs> I, <laughs> Let's I, think about it. I'm not going to get me. some I, more subs. I, I tell people, uh, out of all documentaries, I watch the UFOs documentaries less because I get tired of seeing the same suits, science, same type of people that seems like they keep doing these documentaries. I don't get to see real young people or, you know, looser it's always the yeah. same stuck up suit and ties type of people doing these ufo documentaries that's why i kind of stay away from them but i agree you know the, we need the somebody series. new you know well, like, yeah yeah if yeah, you yeah, and yeah. i did one i think it'd be awesome because we'd be looser and more fun more yes like exactly this is what people want to hear and that's why you know, um, we have all these other commentators, uh, you know, that people were talking about. Um, and I think specifically intense people who comment, like people who are really intense. And <laughs> whatever, I'll just, you know, there, there are people with really intense, huge personalities in these fields and they fight and they do all these things. But like, I think it's just that our community is small, which is why I want it to grow, 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 grow. Because I feel like if our if our community was bigger and we could get our friends and family on board to actually want to take in this content and want to take in these information, I think these bigger voices um, that are controversial, um, and you guys all know which ones I would be talking about it if I brought them up, but these controversial voices, sometimes they don't even get along with each other. 
but they're important. The skepticism is important, the critique, the commentary, because the fluffy everybody got abducted by aliens and everybody's seen a UFO and we love all of it. And you passed out by you passed out one night and you got missing time like that. that those days are <laughs> over. We can't entertain that anymore. I can't say, oh, well, OK, you woke up and you didn't know how you got there. Well, I had missing time. Well. And I saw a light in the sky. That's not enough anymore. No. And and we and we have to constantly show people that this isn't enough anymore. And so these critical voices are really a pushback on like the fluffy, happy go lucky UFO. Everybody, you know, everybody, like nobody's lying. All of these are real. All these stories are real. Some of them aren't real. And we're in a situation where like we got people at the dinner table talking about aliens and the first thought is six foot aliens and the girl on the airplane, <laughs> six foot aliens in Las Vegas and the girl on the airplane flipping out about the shapeshifter. Oh, yeah. this is what like, right. This is what we get. This is what gets delivered at the dinner table. This is yeah. what people hear. So you're still getting put into that wacky, crazy mm -hmm. category. And when they wake up, they're not going to go to the models. They're not going to go to like super attractive people. They're going to want to go to I am authentic. A we are super both just, of us just look at me both of I, us. I am a model both of look us. at me I, i'm professional looking model you know yeah i wish no I wish. i'm 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 not if, either right if, and it's, if it's people like see totally... me in my underwear i'll be arrested no <laughs> no but beyond that um, um you know we'll, we'll end the show and i just oh, want to okay. say i always have fun going on your channel it's fun having yes. you here because we're just we could talk for hours yeah <laughs> hours and once I get stuff together and I do I do more panels, it's just like, gosh, it's really hard with all the things, especially doing the morning show. But I'm just really glad we had the time to sit down and talk because I love sitting down and talking, especially when it's not my show, because I like to bounce off of other people and I like to grow as a person. And I think this is all part of the journey with with ufology for a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Everybody in the chat, I appreciate you all of you for being here. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to her channel. Uh, put the put the thumbs up. I know you guys hear that a lot. Put the thumbs up. And people, leave some comments. For whatever reason, I get the less comments out of any channel, but that's because I don't ask for them. But if you can, leave a comment. Let us know what you liked about the show, what you didn't like, and what you want. If you want us to come back together what would you want us to talk about oh you know, i got one channel they always channel, say to use a hook matter. they always say to use a hook right eric um so what was i gonna say oh i had a good hook for them one second one second one second do you think we need unity in the community drop it in the comments <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> right and, that's and my answer yeah. is yes we need better unity and it starts with you and i starts with anybody that that's starts where with it is everybody Starts the, with basic mutual respect for yeah, everyone. We're going to agree and we're going to disagree. But that's fine. That's as fine. long as we stick away from personal attacks. Like, yes, you know, like no, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're dumb, you, you know nothing, blah, blah, blah. Like that. once it gets nah, to that I point, away it's from like that. Uh, but beyond that, everybody have a great and safe weekend. And I'll see you on my live show on Monday. You'll see her on her live show on Monday. And then I'll check you guys later. Uh,